Uh, hi, my name is Sebastian Gia. I'm 26 years old. I graduated from Yumi Institute of Design in the very north of Sweden uh, over a year ago with a master degree and currently work at BMW Group in Munich um, on future mobility experiences. And in the past, I worked in Europe and US uh, in design innovations, uh, design uh, agencies, innovation agencies, and in those departments on uh, different projects in different industries, for example, transportation, mobility, healthcare, and uh, consumer electronics. Um, I think working in, or getting some experience in aviation, I think, was a great uh, preparation for working in uh, mobility because actually there are a lot of similarities. Um, designing an experience for somebody in a kind of uh, defined space uh, where the person is sitting for a longer uh, time and actually it's a very passive experience, right? The person doesn't have to drive in the, in the, in the airplane. So actually there are a lot of similarities uh, if you think of how to design experience for a person sitting in an airplane compared to a person sitting in a vehicle. But actually there are more opportunities and more flexibility uh, in the vehicle space obviously. But there are a lot of learnings um, because the aviation industry had to solve a lot of problems already. Uh, when designing for that kind of experience. So, yeah, there's a lot of cross-learning from uh, aviation to mobility and um, def definitely some similarities. And then also, aviation always has been uh, about the service, not so much product-centric, and this is also matching with some of the trends we see in mobility. Yeah, if you look at the user needs in, uh, if somebody sits in an airplane in the aviation experience, actually a lot of similarities also to the experience in the vehicle. So for example, things people do in an airplane, like um, reading, like um, sleeping, and watching movies and so on. So these kind of uh, experiences that in the future also has to be, could be interesting for vehicles obviously. So um, yeah, so definitely the, you do, some of the use cases are very similar. Um, yeah, so uh, BMW Explore is uh, actually my master thesis. It's a collaboration between, it was a collaboration between the Institute of Design in the very north of Sweden and BMW Group. And the aim of the project was really to apply human-centered design in the context of mobility and be really user-driven. And um, um, in the end, it's a strategic mobility um, service experience for BMW. And um, the project was really open from the beginning, so it wasn't a, f a f freeze result. It doesn't have to be something digital or something physical. So it was very much driven by the um, user insights and user feedback. So prototyping played a huge role in the project. Um, very early, early on, I started to prototype, build mock-ups, both digital but also physical, and then got feedback from users. Uh, is this the right um, problem that I'm solving? Is that the right, or the right way I'm solving the problem? and then um, getting feedback along the process as the concepts got more refined um, and uh, was very helpful. Um, and then also what I figured out in this project was that actually using the um, space, so the, the vehicle, um, actually the actual context where, what you, where you're designing for, is a great way to boost your empathy and your understanding for the user situation. So I often actually did a lot of design doing and thinking in, in the vehicle, for example, and prototype and brainstorm there. Uh, or also being on the road, you know, brainstorming uh, in that situation. That really helped to, you know, help the creativity and the empathy, I think. Yeah, if you solve, if you try to solve such a complex, um, you know, user scenario like mobility, where it's you know, many touch points and it's a quite long interaction, um, actually it, it needs multiple design disciplines um, to really um, create an experience that, you know, um, tries to solve different things on that long journey. Um, but it's not the use case just for mobility in general, if you design for you know, such complex um, user scenarios. And um, so service design played a big role in you know, defining the, the touch points, also how they stack together, how is the transition from touch point to touch point, what role did you know, business uh, play, uh, potential partnerships. There was a lot of service design. Uh, doing the, actually all the way of the project and UX UI played a big role in actually designing the interaction both um, with the brand but also the digital um, interaction and then um, the product design also played a big role by coming from user needs in the vehicle actually there was also a new requirement on interior hardware basically so and um, their product design industry design played a, a big role as well. Yeah, so artificial intelligence um, is a huge role, uh, obviously, in mobility. But what I tried to use, explore in this project was, I mean, obviously, we all know about the value of um, artificial intelligence in the vehicle. 
but I explored a little bit also how this influenced the experience before you actually get into the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So uh, especially targeting long distance traveling, um, how can artificial intelligence you know, improve the planning process. So I imagined in this project the vehicle as a proactive companion that really helps people to plan the, um, the ride mm -hmm. and uh, for example remind people of things to bring and things to take care of. So the, the touch points were driven by the user insights I got um, from the users I interviewed and I studied. Um, and um, it's stacked into eight touch points. Um, four are in the vehicle, so the vehicle experience itself. Then uh, what a big role also played is the experience before the ride. So you know, three main touch points before the ride and then one afterwards. So in the, before the ride it's a lot about the planning process, the arranging process. Um, taking care of things, uh, ordering equipment, um, that kind of stuff. Then in, in the vehicle itself, entertainment played a big role. Also, how can we trigger more social interaction between passengers? Um, how can we turn you know, time usually wasted in a traffic jam into um, a useful time spent? For example, preparing for the destination or uh, growing yourself. And then afterwards, the, the touch point was about how can we make, a, make people remember what they experienced and also how can we, how does it cycle back to the beginning. So a good service is always something that, you know, in the end kind of create long-term value for the user. So how can it cycle back to the beginning and how can you actually create user loyalty. So in this project I explored also how mobility can really be a platform for created experiences. And these created experiences could include everything you would need for the journey. And the vehicle would be basically be the enabler for such experiences. So it could include uh, equipment you would probably need, um, the destination, potential tickets. Also, the route could be uh, uh, created in terms of uh, points of interest, uh, interesting stops on the way. And basically creating a full package where the, the vehicle is basically the enabler for um, that experience. Also interesting, digital entertainment could be also uh, part of this. So um, depending on where you go, what you do, um, digital content can be contextual and then uh, you know, make sure you don't uh, lose time in traffic jam but you can use that time to prepare for the destination, explore the destination or you know, uh, what's around you. So, so the BMW window of the future is really coming from user insights, again, doing the user research. And um, what I discovered in user research was that people actually often forget uh, if they find something interesting, it can be a gas station, it can be an interesting building, but they often you know, forget where it was, you know, and um, um, they don't have time to pull out their smartphone you know, to add a bookmark or anything. So this was one insight. Um, and um, coming from that, I looked into how this could really change the interaction um, in the vehicle. And the idea is that uh, with the BMW window of the future, you have uh, basically a, a quick button to bookmark any, anything you find interesting um, directly uh, without having pulling out your smartphone. Another insight was that people often have, just have seconds to actually experience something they find interesting on the way. So if you pass something and you find something interesting, if you turn your head, you probably maybe have a couple of seconds to experience or you are late at all. So you actually can't experience it. So I explored how this could, you know, again, change the interaction with the window. And the idea is to use uh, virtual reality, basically, and cameras facing outside that enable on Thomas driving to make people go back in time. So as soon as you use the controller on the window, you can basically go uh, back in time by turning, uh, having a toilet uh, window, a transparent OLED. The window can turn from transparent to virtual as soon as you turn the, the uh, controller and basically makes you able to you know go back in time and experience something again um, and it's using the content that uh, it got from the cameras that enable on Thomas driving and um, you know you can do more things you can have slow motion experience you can have you can pause the moment you can also go into the future by using content from other vehicles in front of you and then maybe have a look uh, how the view looks in a couple of minutes so Another aspect of the BMW window of the future was the aspect of augmented reality. So um, the window would enable you know, contextual storytelling. Um, you could have you know, augmented reality on the way. And what was interesting actually during the user testing was that how little contextual information 
how little storytelling, you know, sometimes just a sentence, kind of makes an, an, a normal view into an exciting story. So you know, it, is, um, it kind of helps to reveal all the richness we have in our environment and uh, the stories. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so it's a personal project of mine. Um, it's a podcast. It's about um, interviewing forward-thinking uh, design practitioners, uh, design thinkers, design doers on the value of design, uh, what, how and why design drives things forward. And uh, it's about you know, learning the stories uh, they experience during their career. Uh, can be designers, can be also uh, not designers by training, just people who have to do a lot with, with design, for example, product managers and so on. But it's about you know, learning uh, what the, you know, basically the positive impact of design. And uh, yeah, I was looking for a while for a good format to basically you know, give back to the design community and create something that is interesting for people to learn about. So yeah, I look forward to the conversations. Yeah, so it's re regardless of industries. Actually, I think the, the mix of industries makes it interesting. So um, it can be, can be automotive, can be healthcare, um, can be you know, finance, you know, can be different industries. I think, and then what's interesting is really the learnings and kind of the similarities you maybe see with, uh, between industries. Mm -hmm. And I think um, the kind of things they share and they are common. Um, so I think actually I would not like to focus on the certain industries, but actually to mix it up and like have have different industries, um, also different countries. So people from U.S., people from Europe, Africa, or uh, Asia. Yeah. So um, I um, actually on the website you could you could propose questions to the next person who gets interviewed. So I will gather the questions. Um, maybe have some own some some of my uh, of myself I would like to ask. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's open, so you know, if people give me feedback, they want to learn something about, you know, what also you, know, you can propose certain people to interview and then I can try to, if I can make the uh, connection. Yeah, thank you so much Intellius for the interview, I really enjoyed it and I'm uh, really much looking forward to the conference here in LEAF over the next days and meeting the other speakers, meeting people from the audience and uh, connect to also the startup scene in Ukraine. So it's my first time actually here, so I'm super excited.